everyone, thanks for joining me today. If you're new to my channel, I'm Dr. Lewis Cran, family medicine physician. And in today's video, we're gonna talk about some recent concerns that have surfaced regarding the AstraZeneca vaccine and some potentially serious side effects. We're also gonna talk about what the researchers have found regarding these side effects, and ultimately, what the status of use of the vaccine is around the world. All right, let's get started. Okay, so first let's review what's happened so far and what actually led to over 20 European countries pausing the use of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. So in the routine safety surveillance of the vaccine, it was noted that approximately 469 cases of blood clots had shown up in the adverse event reporting. Now, let's put this in perspective. That sounds like a lot of blood clots, but ultimately, the vaccine's been used over 20 million times in Europe and the UK alone. So really, if you think about it, that's not that large of a number, but it was large enough of a number to get everybody's attention and actually cause them to start to look deeper. What ultimately got everybody excited was an increased incidence, or at least some concern for increased incidence of two particular conditions. One called DIC, or disseminated intravascular coagulation, that causes blood clots in multiple blood vessels, and then you also had something called cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, which is a blood clot that occurs in one of the main blood vessels that drains the blood from the brain and ultimately can lead to a stroke. Now, there were 18 cases, as of when I looked up the data, of CVST and eight cases of DIC. Now again, that doesn't sound like a lot, but it was enough to get the regulator's attention because the cases were over what would be expected in the general population. So out of an abundance of caution, the regulators recommended pausing the use of the vaccine and many of the countries did indeed do so. Now, this is a perilous time to be recommending pausing the vaccine because again, if you've been paying attention to what's been going on in Europe, cases have been spiking again, particularly in Italy, France, where they've instituted lockdowns again. So in order for the regulators to recommend pausing use of the vaccine, there better be a really good reason. And ultimately, they felt like they had one. They needed a little bit of time to look through the data and see if there was really a causal link or if it just was happening by chance. Now, we know in the general population that there's going to be blood clots that happen every day. They're actually somewhat common. I think what ultimately got the regulator's attention was these two rarer types of blood clots that unfortunately did lead to the death of several individuals and therefore bared scrutinizing further. Now, they took a few days to do this, look through all the data, and ultimately what they decided was that while the cases were above what would be expected in the natural population, now, and I'm talking just about DIC and CBST. The actual incidence of blood clots itself, the 469 cases, was actually below, if we just talk all blood clots, was actually below what would be expected in the general population. So we have to kind of make that distinction here. So what they ultimately decided was the benefits of the vaccine in preventing severe COVID preventing hospitalization, preventing death, etc., outweighed the risks of the vaccine. Now, if you know anything about medicine, we know that nothing is 100% effective and nothing is 100% safe. I tell people in my office, even drinking the water comes with risks. Everything we do in medicine, every therapy we recommend, no matter how benign it might seem, is a balance of risks and benefits. And that's ultimately what the European Medicines Agency, which is essentially the equivalent of the FDA in the United States, had to do when looking at these potential side effects that may or may not be caused by the vaccine. It's important to note that they did not um, definitively find a causal relationship. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what some additional research has found though here in just a second. 
So ultimately, they decided that it was okay to continue to recommend and approve the vaccine. Now, there were a few countries, namely Denmark, uh, Norway, Finland, and Sweden, I believe, that have continued to pause use of the vaccine and want to look into it a little bit further themselves. But most of the other large European countries, France, Italy, um, Germany, et cetera, have restarted as of Friday um, use of the vaccine. And the United Kingdom never stopped. So, um, again, you have to look at this from the perspective of the global pandemic that we're in, the potential risks and the potential benefits, and decide uh, whether the benefits outweigh the risks. On a global population health perspective, the regulators ultimately decided that the benefits outweighed the risks. Now, when you're thinking about taking the vaccine, you need to do that same thing on an individual level. You need to determine what's your risk of getting COVID, what's your risk of having severe infection and ultimately potentially death uh, versus what's the risk of the vaccine. Now, one of the important caveats that they noted here was that all of the cases of the severe blood clots actually happened in women who were younger than 55. And it's interesting to point out here that this risk was not seen in the clinical trials. And one theory behind that is because in the clinical trials, they actually geared towards using older, less healthy individuals. In the case of these severe blood clots, these are happening in younger, healthier individuals that may not have been included in the clinical trials to the same level that they're now being included in vaccinating the general population. So that's one potential reason why this wasn't seen in the trials. So a practical recommendation if you're in Europe and considering this vaccine is, unfortunately, if you're 55 or younger and female, if you have access to a different vaccine versus the AstraZeneca vaccine, you might consider it to be a safer alternative and seek out one of those other vaccines. Because it is important to note that this has not been seen in either of the mRNA vaccines, the Pfizer or the Moderna vaccine, and it hasn't been seen or reported with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Now that one's important because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uses an adenovirus vector similar to the AstraZeneca vaccine, although they do use different viral vectors. One of the other things that I promised to mention earlier regarding why this might have occurred is researchers in Germany believe they have discovered that in some individuals, again, very rare, but some individuals after receiving the AstraZeneca vaccine may create an antibody that can lead to the increased risk of blood clots. So more research is going to be needed and is continuing on whether that indeed is a potential cause and link to the AstraZeneca vaccine. In that case, there may be some additional scrutiny that the vaccine and other vaccines that may also lead to that will need. Now, again, it's important to keep in mind risks and benefits. The risk of the vaccine, the risk of the benefit of the vaccine, the risk of getting COVID, the benefit of not getting COVID. You also might want to keep in mind that COVID itself can cause blood clots, right? Up to 20% of individuals, especially those hospitalized, the number goes up to, I believe, over 30% of individuals who are hospitalized can develop blood clots with COVID itself. So again, you need to factor in a lot of different variables when you're trying to decide whether or not to get the vaccine. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there who are highly skeptical of these vaccines and are honestly looking for any little tidbit of information to convince them that these vaccines are not safe and to try to convince others that they're not safe and to avoid use of the vaccine. So I implore you to continue to follow this story, look for the additional information that's likely to come out in the next days or weeks, and make whatever the best decision is for you at that time regarding whether you get vaccinated against COVID-19, whether it's with this vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, or whether it's with any of the others that may be available to you. We know the vaccines work. We know that they're still considered very safe and very effective. 
despite this new concern. So I hope you'll keep that in mind when you're making your decision whether or not to get vaccinated. Okay, that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please consider liking the video. It helps other people see it. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you've been vaccinated and if so, which one and whether you've had any significant side effects or not. I'm curious to know everybody's reaction. I've shared my reaction to uh, the Moderna vaccine in a previous video. And as always, be safe out there.